This is Roblox Finalization. Today I will be analyzing Build the Boat for Treasure. If you've seen these before and wondering why I'm going with full body animation, well, there's a pretty good reason why I'm going with full body animation. It's due to the fact that these videos take a while to make, so I thought, why not just add a little bit of animation to spice things up a bit. Plus, it seems a lot better than just looking at mostly footage, for the whole video at least. So that is what I decided for this video, and maybe future ones too. But anyways, we are here to analyze Build a Boat for Treasure. And we'll be analyzing five key parts, impression, gameplay design, theme, and uniqueness. So anyways, let the analyzation begin. When I was first beginning to play the game, I expected it to be very similar to the classics, and this is one of the ones that I found that I could actually play, made back in 2009, by Ert12337. Back then when I joined around 2013, these games were still quite popular, but unfortunately not many of them work today. Either that, or they're just incredibly hard to come by. But this is the one that I found. And it looks incredibly similar to what I remember it being. You could make a boat, you had unlimited resources at your disposal, but you had to think a bit harder to make a good looking boat. Plus, you couldn't save your boat either. Although in the back I saw a gallery where you could see these old masterpieces, frozen in time. And this game also had some old Roblox building gear too. And in quite a bit of the older games in Roblox that had to do with building a boat, usually had like this very rough, dangerous river that you could call. And they were usually very fast if you had a small boat like this. And back then I assume you had a free amount of collaboration as you could let people in, but I think Roblox broke a lot of that because my friend said there is absolutely nothing there. So, maybe that's either just Roblox breaking it, or it was intended. But anyways, it was fun, it was dangerous. And that was what I remember. Other than the fact that other people and other teams in a different game could just delete my stuff even though they weren't from my team. But anyways, that's about it for the past of what I feel build a boat for treasure is sort of inspired by. But anyways, I'll be showing off the impressions with a new account, so that way I'm left with absolutely nothing. So I was showing a brisk, short tutorial that got straight to the point of how to use the tools. I didn't need the tutorial, but it wasn't that much in the way. I could just skip it if I wanted to. Plus, you never see it again either. When you first start, you are given around six blocks of wood and a seat. A basic seat, and they give you a few low price chests that aren't that hard to buy. And they do give you 10 gold, which means that's enough to buy a couple common chests. Once you do launch your boat on the sea, it will usually be a pretty fast boat due to the fact that, well, you're just starting, and it's a pretty small boat too. But with a small boat comes a lot of its cons. Plus, the starting materials aren't that great either. So your boat will break, and you will lose pretty fairly quickly, for the first few rounds at least. So then as you buy more chests, your boats will also evolve. It may take a while, but as time goes on, you'll be able to buy a lot more better high quality blocks. So anyways, he's gonna say bye, and we are done with this guy. But anyways, that is about it for the impressions I got. So now, I will be giving the points for impressions. Anyways, this has a fair amount of impression points. And it has a pretty solid way of executing low progression and high progression. So anyways, now that I've got impression all done, I will now go into the gameplay category. There is actually quite a bit to the gameplay of this game. There's not just one way to play the game, like building a boat, 
and then just getting to the end. There's quite a few different ways. Plus, you don't just have to build a boat, you could build anything. You could build a car, you could build some type of helicopter using glitches or something. You could even build a sphere if you want to. So as you can see, there's a lot of gameplay options you can do in this game. So, there's quite a bit of things you can make to change up the gameplay a little bit. There are generally three factors that come into place while playing this. There are about three key ways in order to get your boat to the island. Your boat needs to be durable. Being fast is optional, but it will help quite a bit. And also the randomized stages that range from easy stages to hard stages. But believe me, the gameplay does not end there. You can also do um, PvP against other boats and players. So anyways, I gathered quite a bit of people to actually participate in the Great Boat War. So anyways, I'll let you enjoy this footage with some good Creo music. So anyways, there's a lot of variety in the gameplay, which is why I like the gameplay for this game a lot, which allows for a lot more audiences to enjoy the game too. One thing that I forgot to mention was that you can also use thrusters to speed up your boat, for a temporary amount of time of course. There's also a variety of quests to choose from in the quest menu, so anyways, I will now be giving my points for gameplay. So now, I will analyze the design category. Now, there is quite a bit of design features, but what I also like about the design is that it has a bridge to gameplay also, and I'll go over why that is. Now, depending on how you design your boat, it will also affect the gameplay of how that boat will play out. Now, as you can see, this boat is on four pillars, I made it like that so that way it can survive longer, while the pillars take more damage than the main body. The only problem with this boat is it takes a very long time to load, and it's extremely slow. 
but I think the reason why it takes long to load and why it's slow is due to the fact that I didn't use any merging on this boat. But if I were to remake this boat again, I would use no merging on the pillars and then merging on the main body. So if you make a big boat without merging, you'll have to consider the speed factor. Now, this is another boat I have in my arsenal that I call the Hourglass, and I used it in the PvP footage, as you saw earlier in the gameplay category. And believe it or not, but this boat actually has a higher chance of getting to the island than the previous boat I showed. True, it's smaller, but I made it to take a bit less area, and even though I didn't use merging on it, it's still pretty fast. Now, I made this one with actually a sort of similar idea with the Hyper Titan, my previous boat. Instead of multiple pillars, I just made the entire boat a pillar, or what I call an hourglass now. But even if the boat manages to tip over, you're still very safe, and it will still move at the same speed, or even faster sometimes. Plus, I added some thrusters at the side, so that way it can roll around if it's pointing in a certain direction. So, I would say it's a pretty good boat if you're looking for mobility purposes. And I would say this boat is my best in terms of design. But it definitely isn't the best PvP boat since, well, it got destroyed pretty easily in the gameplay section. This one would probably be a much better choice for PvP because it's huge, which makes it durable, and there's loads of cannons on it too. In terms of building space, I'd say there's a fair amount. You have a fair amount of width and length, except you have an infinite amount of height that you can achieve. This height is demonstrated in another video I made, where I made this giant ladder staircase. They have a great Discord server too, with um, a Hall of Fame where you can see all these awesome designs. And this Hall of Fame alone shows the many designs that you can achieve and build a boat. You can see that a lot of the creators in this Hall of Fame use their imagination really well in making their own boats. And some even take their imagination to the fullest extent possible. And of course, with most creative games, you don't have to just build a boat in this one. You could build the Nobby like in this footage right here. Or you can harpoon all your friends if you want to. And with the collab possibilities, there's a lot of creativity that can go into it, especially if you have two or three minds making the boat. So there's loads of creative potential that you can achieve within this game. And plus, the sky is the literal limit here. So I definitely like the design a lot. And now I will be giving my points on design so that way we can go to theme. So now, I will be analyzing the theme of this game. Wait, actually, before we start theme, uh, I forgot to mention a couple things. Uh, there's actually this paintbrush tool, and it can color things. Plus, they have a wide variety of blocks that you can use. Plus, you really have to give them props for making their own meshes. Also, this mysterious block does some strange things, like making your head big, inflating a random giant balloon out of nowhere, destroying all of your hard work, turning your blocks into gold. Oh crud, I was too late. Uh, just pretend that they turned into gold, okay? We'll just leave it there. And then last but not So added these sick new jet parts that you can get for around 4,000 gold. It's pretty neat. You can like control any boat with it. So, you've made it to this part of the video. Guess I'll call these the end game subjects since they are short. But to summarize the theme, you don't have to build only a boat. You can build anything that you can imagine. Which is what I like about this and many other sandbox games. The theme can be anything you want. 
Although what makes this game fun for me is testing the durability and the usefulness of the boats on the vast sea. Plus there's items that give extra theme to the game, like car parts and jets, giving vast gameplay and design mechanics. So the theme of this game is essentially your imagination. So now I will give you my points for the theme. So now I'll move into the final theme, uniqueness. So, as you guys know, Build a Boat is not one of the first games of this kind, but it certainly is a great one. Another game that is pretty similar to Build a Boat is this game by Quinty called Whatever Floats Your Boat. So anyways, you build the boat from random props, you can add cannons and stuff like that. You basically make a boat fit for battle, and then this flood comes out of nowhere. This could be a game for another video, so I'm just gonna leave a quick summarization. Imagine a battle royale, but with boats. If you want me to do this game, let me know in the comments below. I even did a live stream on it a while ago. Alright, I'm not going to simply say that your imagination finds the uniqueness of this game. Most general sandbox games already have that. What makes this game unique is the content the game provides. Events, block types, etc. As we know, there's already car parts and jet parts. Plus, so far I've seen quite a bit of seasonal events in this game. And there's loads of block types. I think just about every block type with some custom blocks in the mix. And with Roblox's physics and game glitches, you can bend the gameplay and blocky aesthetic. I like the sandbox game, and that's about all I have to say. So now I'll give my points on uniqueness. Alright, well that is all the subjects covered, but before the video ends, I will show off all of the new boats I have made, and two of them I have actually remade, so hope you enjoy. First up is a steampunk hourglass, which has made it into the Hall of Fame, made by me and with some help from TaxBeady, plus since I used the merging, it's a lot faster. The next one I made is a bit small, and it's called Sentient Elbum, which is more of like a little short project, which has a bit of a pop-up texture to it, also made with a little help from TaxBeady. Next is the Steampunk Titan, which is the better version of the Hyper Titan, with a functioning clock, better performance, more durability, and it is a lot faster too. It also has a mini escape pod, and quite a bit of thrusters but I don't recommend using them because they will make you go, like, ultra fast. And this boat was made from the help of Tech Speedy and Mr. Cap 2. And last but not least, the Angry Bumper, which is my biggest build and also my hardest one to build too. Made with a little help from Tech Speedy and has loads of cannons and lots of defense features to it. It is extremely durable and it has a mad face on it too, hence the name, The Angry Bumper. But anyways, that's about all for this Roblox analyzation. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day or night depending on where you live, and bye.